So at the time of recording, it is February the 17th, which is exactly 15 days from the launch of the Apple Vision Pro. And for anyone that knows anything about Apple's return policy, you know that it's 15 days as well, which is why we're seeing so much of this. Now, I find it funny because I made a short term video poking fun at the fact that this was bound to happen. And so it's pretty hilarious to see the headlines about how many devices are actually being returned. Now, I'd say most people got theirs between February 2nd and about February 7th. So this is going to be a trend for a while, especially on YouTube, which is why I made this thumbnail as a joke and ended up actually using it for this video. So if you can't already tell, I don't own an Apple Vision Pro and unfortunately they weren't available in Canada. So I never really had the choice. I know a bunch of people drove the three hours across the border to pick theirs up, but I just never really thought that it was worth it to drive that far to spend $3,500 on a product that I wasn't sure how it was going to be. Now, that being said, I don't think that the Apple Vision Pro was terrible. I just think that it wasn't ready yet. Obviously, you're going to have a bunch of early adopters that are willing to pick this up and drop the money for the device. And that's probably why there's a 15 day return period in place to give everybody the chance to actually try it and sort of hype things up a little bit. And it was pretty funny for a while. We did see some pretty wacky things. People using their Apple Vision Pro on public transit. We got Casey Neistat running around New York doing whatever he was doing with his and a bunch of other examples that were purely for entertainment but if you were someone that was actually observing what was going on you probably started to notice a trend that there wasn't really any specific use case for the apple vision pro what was meant to be an entertainment device and increased productivity really didn't seem to be able to do any of those two things particularly well and honestly, I'm not hating because I think that's exactly what Apple was expecting. Dropping a product that costs $3,500 USD, it's going to be immediately polarizing. And so I don't think the overall goal of this device was to sell as many units as possible. They knew that they would get sales from all the fanatics and that this thing would go crazy on social media and start to build a buzz or start to build a hype so that in the future, when they release a more affordable Apple vision, you're going to have people that are itching and rearing to go to get their hands on it. Now, in addition to that, obviously they need to get these in the hands of developers in order to start building an entire ecosystem because as I said earlier, it seemed like the entire experience was sort of lacking. And I'm not taking anything away from the engineering genius that went into making this device because the hardware is beautiful. The displays are like nothing that anyone's ever seen before, but there are definitely some immediate glaring drawbacks. Like for me personally, it's the whole battery pack on a cord thing that has to be in your pocket. Anyways, going back to the developers, obviously you need to get these into the hands of people that are going to be making those third party apps for your device and because those don't exist right now the overall experience is just lacking in the majority of the reviews and videos about the apple vision pro you see people connecting to their macs you see people scrolling through their apps but they're not really doing anything like sure it's cool to have seven screens up while you're walking around in this ar environment but there's tons of other devices that can do the exact same thing that cost a fraction of the price for example mark zuckerberg just talked about his experience with the apple vision pro and how much he thinks the meta quest 3 is much better and obviously Obviously, he has to say that because he is the meta boss. But at the end of the day, when you're comparing these two things side by side, they're really not that far off. Again, aside from the physical. So as I mentioned before, I think people are failing to remember Apple's naming schemes. These are called the Apple Vision Pro. In the same way, you have the AirPods Pro, you have MacBook Pro, you've got the iPhone Pro and Pro Max. And so for every pro device, there is a lesser and much more affordable device underneath that that is meant for the average consumer. And so I think that's where they're going next. I don't have the numbers on how many units were actually purchased, and I obviously don't have the numbers on how many units were returned. So at the end of the day, I don't think that the Apple Vision Pro was a failure like everybody's going to want to say. I think that the launch was extremely intentional and that it's only going to get better and cheaper from here. But let me know down below. Did you pick up an Apple Vision Pro? Are you planning to return yours or did you pick up one of the alternatives? Either way, though, that's been it for me. Much love as always, throwing up two of them, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.